great to see you once again in this this is now part three lesson one c so third part of the lesson and i trust that in the previous lessons you've managed to understand or demonstrate some aspects that you learned and i'm going to give a quick recap before i share the uh, next objectives of what we're going to do today in this session to complete uh, some aspects of the principles and practices of assessment in the previous sessions, um, as a matter of fact, we looked at um, um, we looked we began looking at um, explain the principles and requirements of assessment, and in this we we looked at uh, the purpose of assessment, and uh, and we discussed at length, and we also looked at the uh, assessment methods. And we have now covered assessment methods that's been covered. Um, so in, in, in total, lesson one, two has covered the types of assessments and also assessment methods and some bits of, on principles and requirements of assessment. And if we very quickly go to the, um, the slide that we used in the previous session, we looked at the purpose of assessment, which we said uh, involves mainly to grade the attainment of learners. Uh, also, another scenario in the job workplace, help select the best candidate, and uh, judge occupational competence, help to plan a better teaching strategy and implement equality and diversity, help plan an assessment, effective assessment plan, uh, helps to review the effectiveness of quality assurance we looked at uh, organizations such as colleges, even the other industries that do a lot of internal quality assurance. So these are some of the aspects that we, we covered in the uh, previous uh, session. And now I want us to look at uh, the second part of uh, the principles and practices of assessment, which is in short, we are now going to complete this third part which we will look at in depth or to a considerable a, a standard. We we'll look at the principles and requirements of assessment. Now in this, what are the key concepts that govern that govern the, the, the principles and requirements of assessment? As an assessor, one of the things that you've got to look at it is, is fairness reliability, validity, safe and manageable, suitability, and authenticity. And also one that is missing there at the bottom, I can, you can write over here, it's a currency. Just include, include one of the, the, the currency of assessment there. Now let, let's examine one by one each of these um, uh, concepts, because an assessment must have certain uh, uh, foundations or, or anchors upon which we can build. We can't just do anything and, uh, and say this uh, uh, the assessment is okay and the candidate's passed anyway. Let's award qualification. There must be some things uh, that underpins or are the foundations of a proper assessment. If we can identify those, then we can surely say this candidate has been properly assessed and the qualification is valid. Now, I may not go through a, in a sequential order as they are listed over here, but I will start at any point. But let's first of all look at suitable to the candidate's needs. One of the concepts in uh, assessment, very first thing you must do is the candidate on the right level of the course. And this is achieved through the initial assessment. At that stage, when you find that the, the candidate is not at the suitable uh, um, uh, level of the course, the course is too uh, high up the ladder, they might need to start at entry level, is when you pass the recommendation. Because those diagnostic tests tell us a story. From that point in, in time, if you make a right decision, then when we come to look looking at um, the suitability of the assessment, we can say surely it is okay because the candidate actually fits in this category 
what's the evidence the initial assessment shows that but it's cold they, they, they hard as you talk to them you saw what they've learned before there's also evidence in their previous certification prior knowledge so by the time we are getting to a final or summative assessment will have done this pro process of initial assessment then we find that the candidate surely can undergo this kind of assessment with the appropriate method chosen look it's need it, the word is uh, suitable to the candidate needs that's very important needs are varied but the key area the level of the course is it level three is that right for them secondly the way the assessment is designed and the words the jargon is very important now if an assessment process can meet that requirement is doing fine safe and manageable there is also a risk that has to be taken into consideration risk of failure if the assessment is not safe for example here's a construction industry construction place maybe there's lots of mechanism going over there and we design an assessment process have we done a risk assessment such that in that environment there's no risk of harm to the candidate taking into consideration that the level of the assessment is all right but is it safe and manageable is a task we are giving them for assessment manageable in the environment was it considered if your assessment observation in the workplace requires a certain number of activities we must put into consideration has there been risk assessment in that environment is a record available is a risk assessment current then if we can answer those questions then we are putting our candidate in a safe environment even the way we design the assessment itself is it manageable is it clear what they're supposed to do so we have to look at those a uh, 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 particulars when planning for an assessment and also carrying out an assessment we let, let, let us look at uh, uh, val validity it's va is it valid or validity to make an assessment valid there's a process and certain things that has to be done as well for example learner signatures the assessor signatures maybe uh, uh, invigilators if there's need be for that and the other parameters such as the standards from the exam board are they the right standards we're using or from the internal organization or any uh, source from which you, you you're getting materials for assessment or any program they are on so we got to look at the process itself at every point in time of our assessment were the signatures by the candidate and the tutor of the assessor signed and dated was there a proper feedback was it in a, 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 a exam environment things such as that who validate or make the assessment invalid so the validity of this assessment must follow a certain legal procedure the signatures are very important and the dates are very important because it signifies who was present who did what and even when the feedback is given it's carried out the candidate resubmits the work the candidate must sign and you are the sasa must sign and both when you do give the candidate record sheets that we have in our system those must be signed and dated the feedback signed and dated that validates the assessment process and with the validation we link it to the authenticity is this piece of work authentic is that the of the uh, uh, of the um, of, of the candidate or is it copied from somewhere so the authenticity really must be there is this an accurate piece of work produced by candidate a how do we prove that you see the process of assessment can safeguard that because once the assessor knows the way the candidate performs 
you'll be able to pick out if there's any uh, foul play you would know candidate A produces work of this quality. You would know that. So that process of signing in, signing signatures, giving feedback can enhance authenticity. The writing style, presentation styles. That is why professional discussions, sometimes I encourage candidates to to include video presentation or the like this. If, if you see me presenting on a topic, Obviously, this is my face. You ain't gonna say, no, I saw this is Eddie Murphy, no, this is John Milkomona, I was presenting. You understand that? So, you see, this authentic work, you can see me talk, and you know how John Milkomona speaks. So, it's important to look at the work, is it really authentic, that of the candidate. The, the word, if we, if we put the word currency here, is it current? In terms of uh, um, in terms of uh, currency, some work in certain industries, the medical industry, teaching industry, IT industry, work evolves. Standards evolve. They change a lot. Health and social care standards change a lot. So when a piece of work is produced, can you judge that it, the material there? A current that is to say they talk about the current legislations the current practices is it sort of uh, showing forth the new materials which are in current use if you produce a piece of work in terms of where, where, where we try to recognize prior training if you came on a subject on a course uh, this year and maybe 15 years ago, you did a piece of work similar to the industry. We would ask you to bring it up to date. Why? Because 15 years ago is a long time ago, is a long time ago, and lots of things will have changed. So that piece of work may not be admitted to the current practice. Why? Because a lot has changed. So you have to look at the assessment. Is it current? How do you know this? You can go to specific websites for certain um, 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 standards, specific organizations for, for certain standards. You can inquire the current trends from certain uh, publications, then compare the notes of what the candidates are saying, if it's true. For example, in the health and safety regulations, a lot of the ch thing, changes take place. You got to counter check with the health and safety executive what are they saying and what is on their system so when you are actually going through an assessment process or design or marking a piece of assessment you've got to consider these aspects is it valid is it authentic is it for example safe and manageable for those who are going to be doing practical ones even if it has been done already you've got to look at was this assessment safe and manageable if it wasn't, some issues may be raised because you put a candidate at risk and the other way around. Okay. Reliable. Can we rely on this information in the uh, assessment? Is it accurate? Is what being said there true of factual statements? Or is it waffles? So the reliability of the information put in that assessment. When a candidate writes a piece of work, you look at it, is this information reliable? How do we do this? How do we find out whether to or not refer against the standards? Also, they got to be current, not out of debt. These are the, uh, the key concepts that we look at all the time, all the time. Compare before few years ago, the current time, and what is the future holds, what's going to be happening in this industry in the future. People are talking about uh, reviews. If the assessment requires you to talk about future reviews that are being considered, why not include it in there? And as an assessor, look for these kind of indicators. Then you'll be able to pass or fail a piece of assessment, depending on these concepts that you see over here. 
because when we when we when, when, when we go through a qualification like this one there must be certain things that we look for in an assessment a piece of work that's well written must be able to look at that now is it fair assessment are the conditions all right for us to carry out an assessment how do you judge fairness I think fairness can come into you and the, the right level of course the quantity and the quality of materials and questions asked meet matches with the level of, a, uh, uh, of the course I can't bring uh, an assessment that's at level five and give to candidates at level two although it's in the same discipline that won't be fair it will be disadvantaging the candidates but if we took a, a, a piece of work from level two and gave it to the people at level five it's also also not, it's also not fair we are deceiving them because if they find it so easy they'll leave the practice thinking they are competent but yet they're not so we've got to look at all those aspects as we go through an assessment process and design assessments and mark the assessments very important okay any questions on this you are free to post them to the online account on the Moodle or pick up the phone telephone and call or Skype in now what I'd like you to do is to take up a piece of work which are uh, will have sent you by post if you haven't got it check on the Moodle I want you to assess that piece of work and grade it look for this concept in there for each of the disciplines that you are on you will have a certain piece of work a case study that you are required to mark as part of your development I proceed um, now the biggest question we're going to ask ourselves now how do we plan an assessment okay and this will answer some of the criteria assessors responsibilities and factors to consider when planning an assessment planning is a very important part of any discipline that you do business wise assessing wise teaching wise there must be a plan and for those on this program you are also a teacher teaching a class and that class you're teaching you're also assessing them so teaching and assessing they go hand in hand together so when you're making a lesson plan there must be an assessment plan as well there was a traditional assessment plan I, I we used to use in those days you have a column here when you say as you go to your lesson plan over here and there's one column say assessment plan and uh, after this day uh, after this se session I'll ask candidates to do a BCD I'll give them a handout or I'll give a test etc but now there's more to assessment planning than just a column and the resources and what are these especially for those who are on these programs to, to assess vocational uh, competence things to consider number one is the candidate ready in the previous session we just talked about fairness reliability authenticity validity etc are we going to ask ourselves now before we set up this assessment would is the candidate ready to do the assessment there are certain types of assessments that we negotiate dates and times with candidates especially vocational ones we can't just jump at the workplace at all oh, and assess I've come to assess your candidate you can't do that so are they ready material wise in terms of the course itself their employers or as the case might be is the time suitable so you're going to have a template we have got all these uh, things listed down you're asking is the time suitable you decide the time if the candidate is ready say yes I'm ready anytime this month okay you pick up a day you ask them which day do you think is good for you so okay give me time I'll talk, I want to talk to my manager oh then she comes to me, my manager says it's okay to do it on Monday the third week of April you say Monday third week of April now okay Monday third week of April surely there's a Monday in that third week of April then say what time oh you are asking the candidate what time you you the assessor must make time you know you understand that what time because they have to make so much changes where they are in their work environment so they say okay this time okay you write that time now the next question is the time chosen by the candidate convenient for the workplace I beg your pardon is it convenient for the workplace 
If it's truly convenient for the workplace, go for it. Now, what does it mean convenient for the workplace? The supervisor at work must be aware and must be present because you are, as an assessor, you're going to be a guest in that place. And the supervisor or the manager is accountable to what happens for health and safety and otherwise, as well as the, the person you're going to be assessing. So when they look at all these aspects, they come back to you and say, it's okay, you can come. You may ask for a copy of the uh, risk assessment that has been carried out in the room or the place you're going to be assessing the candidate. And the candidate's responsibility is to provide that information to you as well. And when you have got a portfolio, I've got a portfolio to show you again here. I've shown you several times. In that portfolio, some of the documents the candidates must put in here, yeah, the policies of their workplace. And risk assessment policy must be there. And the actual risk assessment taken in that environment. The next point is, is there a suitable place to carry out assessment? Now, this is very important. You see, at times, uh, you, there is a combination of the actual observation of the candidate doing our own job or, or their own job. There's also another aspect of questioning in the workplace where you withdraw a candidate in a place where we begin to talk about how they conduct their work, questioning in the workplace. You're not observing them at that point in time, you're just sitting and having a discussion. So you may ask the manager, you may ask the candidate to get consent from the manager to allocate you a room. So this is a process that in fact I recommend as you go uh, or in, in this industry, begin early. If you know in six months time there'll be an assessment, plan it now. Begin to engage with the candidate, to engage with their managers at work so that they have ample time. If there's any adjustments, you can be informed. Avoid planning for an assessment two weeks before or four weeks before. That's not good enough. In fact, it's not good at all. <laughs> right? Are you happy with that? So at this point in time, what I would like you to do is simple and straightforward. I would like you to do a simple exercise. Use your own imaginative here. Create a template. Yeah, a template to include these questions, these points. And this template, you are going to use it to um, find out where the candidate is ready. You are going to use it to find out all these aspects. And should come out in form of a plan. I want to, produ to produce your own uh, and then you compare with what uh, we have produced for you as a, as a handout. But this must be uploaded. Learners, let me say this point. You've paid to come on this course. And the way we deliver the course is so powerful according to your feedback. And the materials that we're organizing are, are, are per perfect according to your feedback. Why don't you use the systems properly? Upload your work on the Moodle. When you do that on the Moodle, all your tutors will be able to see the work. You won't have to send one copy to this tutor, another copy to that tutor in a central place. And then the tutor's feedback will come straight to you. Now, if you, if you miss out looking at uh, the online learning system, you'll be missing out a lot indeed because you'll be depending on the catch-up sessions which we organize in the centers. Please, I beg you, use the online systems and then you will enjoy these facilities far better than you doing firefighting. No firefighting, okay? Now, I'll continue. Let's talk about assessing. What is it measuring? Feedback, verbal and written feedback. Now, when you actually are doing assessing, in the previous sense, session, we talked about the, the purpose of assessment. Now, in the case-by-case -case study, what do you think assessment is measuring? You must have a clear point in your mind. There are certain aspects of uh, measurements. They could be measuring performance, the actual practical performance. It could be measuring skills and understanding, knowledge and understanding, where people can explain theories, can explain concepts. So you've got to be clear in mind when setting up an assessment, what is it measuring? If it's competence, then you're going to choose an observation type of assessment. 
if it's skills, knowledge and understanding, you're going to design an assessment that focuses on theoretical aspects of a discipline. And how you design such an assessment will depend on the learner needs. But it's always good to make a combination of these methods so that you can also stimulate learners by using one other aspect of method as opposed to just the one which they like over time. And if you're going to be measuring skills, knowledge, and understanding, then in your delivery of a course, of a program, you must be able to give them materials and also refer them to textbooks so that when they read textbooks, there they get the knowledge in the discipline, especially principles and concepts. Those are the uh, underpinning uh, things in skills and understanding uh, and, and, and knowledge, if you're going to be measuring that. And also, the way you assess will depend on the type of uh, level of learning. Is it just identifying things? Is it synthesizing? Is it constructing ideas? Is it just uh, 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 numbering? Then in the way you word your assessment, you're going to be using certain words like list, identify, describe, to encourage deeper learning. So when you design your assessment, you must know what are you measuring. Then in the process, very important and very critically uh, uh, focused is this one. Feedback. One of my strengths, according to most candidates that I've taught, is that, sir, you give feedback. Not, not for the sake of giving feedback, not for the sake of giving feedback, I beg your pardon, but how good is the feedback? Let, let me just, um, uh, 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 I just like, how good is the feedback? Because you, you have two aspects. Here is the learner, and, 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 and we have here, um, let me just break it up, and here we have this is the body of knowledge. Okay? You, 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 you tell the learner that's the knowledge and they absorb the knowledge. Okay? Once they absorb the, the knowledge, they are full of knowledge now. They've got knowledge over there, they've got knowledge now, they're full of knowledge. How do you know they are full of knowledge? They will then, they will then come to you and feedback. And this feedback is in the form of an assessment. Can you see? The feedback to you, actually that's an arrow, if, if I can just get rid of that bit, uh, let, me, let me do that. They come and feedback to you. Now you, you as a tutor over here, your tutor over here, when they feedback to you as a tutor, this is very interesting, as a tutor, let's have a look at this diagram, as a tutor, as a tutor, they come and feedback to who? To you. Okay. This is you, the tutor here. Now, you are expected as a tutor to have this here as a standard. So what you'll be doing, as they're feeding back to you, you'll be comparing to the knowledge that you gave them here. And they're reproducing it to you in the assessment as they are supposed to do according to what is there. Once they do that, you are going to now feedback accurately. How do you feedback? That's a question. You are going to feedback to them. This is very important. Now, the way you do your feedback is to be very clear. And this is how you do it. I like feedback which starts with the positives. Number one, you look at what they have achieved. You say, affirm. Why do you have to affirm? It raises their confidence. And when we talk about assessing candidates in the workplace, these are adults. Some of them, once they realize they're not performing, they drop out of the course. Do you know that? Others, they'll stay in there. But for you as an assessor, you want to also have a better retention of your candidates. No one should leave. 
No one should leave at all. So you give them an affirmation. Well done. You have achieved that, that and that. And why you achieved it? Because you explained it. You said that and that. And that's very good. And when you say that, it means the service user or it means the reader of the article will understand and they can be able to use some of the components that you put in your answer here. So you say, oh, that's nice. Because you see a smile, a real good smile, you know, and they say, then you know you are making endnotes with that. You progress and you go to the weaker points and say, now let's look at areas we can now add value or improve. You won't say, let's go to the areas that you did very badly. No, 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 no. Let's go to areas where we can now add value or improve. Say, this one, you said it, da, 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 da. Actually, the better way that we could add value or improve on this is saying da 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 da. Therefore, next time have have a look at da 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 da, and also read a book on page da 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 da. You understand that you give positive feedback, and give them a deadline by next fourteen days or four weeks. I would like you to have a look at this and then bring back the work. You give them a direction in a positive way, in a positive sense. That way, your feedback looks very good and positive. You find that if you practice that kind of method, many of your candidates will love to work with you and they're going to achieve. The key point as an assessor is to make your candidates have a clear goal and be able to achieve. Not spoon feeding them, but do your job properly. Right. Regulations. Now, this is very important. When you are carrying out assessments, each industry has its own regulations. Company and industry rules and regulations. These must be checked for each industry, e.g., I beg your pardon, health and social care, homes, domiciliary care environments, construction sites, hospitals, retails and shop outlets, learning institutions, etc. For any candidate whom you are assessing, if they're going to be on the uh, uh, program, you must check the rules and regulations. They must also know these rules and regulations of the industry, which is why in the folder of the portfolio, we like policies to be included. Because this will be the safeguarding areas for you and your, uh, and your candidate. In fact, the candidate, because they're on the program, you're assessing them, they must know these things as a matter of fact, in the workplace, it's critical to know the regulations which governs that industry, things that can be done and things that can't be done because the law said so. And that's very important uh, to, to avoid risk of, uh, uh, risk of failure and also uh, mitigating against the actual risk of injury. If you, you happen to go and observe somebody there, these things must be known beforehand and what you've got to do in the case of. So it's important to look at uh, these uh, things. Now, can you see how an assessment process has led to regulations? That's very, very important. Regulations always govern how any industry, how any business operates. And these are, uh, 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 are propagated by uh, government institutions. It's very important to know that. Now, recognize the risk involved and seek to minimize them through careful planning. Some risks can be health and safety training requirements, qualifications, uh, licenses, authorization, equipment availability, and servicing. Now, each time you are carrying out an assessment, for you as an assessor, you must have your qualification. You must be licensed to, to, to assess, which is why on this training. That must be checked. Now, health and safety training requirements. These in the workplace, they must be in place. Even yourself might require some, some bit of training in this, and the SSC must be able to. Now, authorization, when you go to uh, assess somebody, the, the, uh, the manager there must authorize you. If you, they don't give authorization, don't go there. And equipment availability and servicing. Now, if you're going to go out there to the workplace and assess somebody, the equipment must be available. If there be a manual handling case, um, or whatever the case might be, equipment must be available and must be serviced. 
you have a right as an assessor to say, no, I want credit assessment on your work because the equipment is not suitable. That's good because you're protecting your candidate and yourself. So, so regulations are quite uh, uh, fundamental in, in, in the process of assessment. It's not something that you can just give a blind eye to. You must, must have the, as a matter of fact, look at the regulations. If you're in child care, what are the regulations in child care? If you're in the construction industry, what are regulations? If you're in LES, etc., you must look at If you're in teaching, what are the regulations in teaching? And this will come form the cornerstone for your legal protection. Now, let's proceed and conclude um, uh, this session by involving learners and others. Already we have looked at uh, the number of things you've got to do and inquire from the managers that involves others. So when you are planning, planning an assessment, you must make sure you involve others. Who are these others? On the side of the learners, in the workplace, their managers, these are others, they must be involved. Uh, the, 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 the candidate uh, uh, service users they're going to be uh, 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 working with, or the trainees they're going to be working with, and also the internal areas, which is your internal quality assurance manager of an internal verifier, must be involved and your own supervisor in that learning institute. You must be uh, working with them as a team player. When you are involved in assessment team, you'll be given somebody to supervise you, and normally this is the internal verifier. The internal verifier counter checks your work before your work is validated by the external uh, verifier, what we call the e e EQA. So now, importance of involving le learners and others. When you involve learners, it motivates the learners. They be become inspired. Why? Because they know where they're going. They know what su they're supposed to do. It's not like they arrive today, boom, years of assessment, go and do it. But if you involve them in the build up, they have confidence that they can do it. After all, they know what the requirements are. If you involve learners by finding out their prior knowledge, they can bring some experience to your work. You know that working with adults, don't take it for granted that they have zero knowledge. No, they don't have zero knowledge. They have more knowledge, in fact, than you probably you, 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 you realize. So when you involve them, they can bring some knowledge to the table. As you are planning an assessment, you find even work much, much easier for both of you or for all of you involved in the team. The expert witnesses, and these are the witnesses out there in the workplace. They can also bring valuable additional that can be of greater value to the assessment process. Because if, for example, you're observing this candidate in this uh, place, workplace, now that manager or the expert witness has done lots of observation because other candidates from other organizations have gone through her hands or his hands. They can, because of that experience, they can bring valuable information to you, valuable knowledge to you. They can make it easier for you. In one aspect where you were supposed to go and coach them on certain areas on how they can help you observe their candidates, they can say, oh, I've done level two observation before because I have 10 candidates last year went through here, the same program. So can I use the, uh, these materials? They show you, oh yeah, it's done already. So your time is compressed. This is why it's important to involve others. And also just for the sake of development, continuous professional development, it's important that you don't close the doors. Now, I'll continue this as the part D of the lesson, how to make assessment decisions. So today, I'm glad for us to close here and just make a quick um, a recap of what we've covered and we'll proceed further. We have looked at uh, the, uh, the principles and requirements of assessment. We have looked at the fairness, reliability, validity, safe and manageable, suitable to the candidate, needs authenticity and currency. These aspects are quite important for us to look at uh, the actual um, um, assessment and its uh, worthiness for the candidate to be issued a qualification. Now, we will backtrack uh, at some point when we get to the end of the session on 
how the whole assessment process works and what can uh, we use, what we can use to make a decision on an assessment. Uh, thank you very much. For any questions, you know where to go. Uh, ring us. Uh, just go on the website as it appears on the screen or on your documents uh, or on your Moodle account, the online link account. Go and chat with your tutor there. You'll be provided with this information. Thank you very much and God bless you.